The ECB is meeting a little bit later to talk about the ELA, to talk about the liquidity story surrounding Greece. Give us a sense of your thoughts on the severity of that liquidity story and how the ECB has to tread incredibly delicately here. Yes, well, the ECB is caught between its role as the guardian of financial stability in the euro area and its member states, where, you know, yep. for the time being, of course, it has to support the Greek uh, banks. The Greek banks are probably not insolvent yep. uh, as long as they're the not lending any money out, though. They're not lending any money out, uh, and uh, the, the 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 worse the economic situation in Greece gets, the the higher NPLs will get, and the more you can get into a situation of insolvency. Um, but yep. as for the time being, I guess they're just illiquid, and the ECB is <laughs> plugging that gap. But on the other hand, the ECB is, of course, also the supervisor of the, the banks and has to make sure that the banks are not taking uh, risks that they shouldn't take and lending to a government which, you know, looks at risk of losing access, not just losing access to markets, but actually losing access to European funding as well, so completely uh, going, uh, going bust. And uh, I think in an ideal world, uh, the ECB would love to have a political agreement between yeah. Eurozone and Greece as quickly as possible so that then it can um, you know, get rid of that role as being the lender of last resort to Greece effectively. This is going back to being personal again though, isn't it? By the sounds of things. I, you've got Varoufakis writing comments in Greek and uh, German newspapers. I, as we approach what looks like to be some fairly difficult deadlines coming down the road, I, this, is, this is once again getting all about the people around the table. But we have to remember that Mr. Varoufakis is actually not really around the table anymore. He's okay. been sidelined in the negotiations. He's still very important and he has a lot of uh, media attention, including uh, in Germany. I don't think uh, his comments, as Hans was pointing out, would be very helpful in persuading Mr. Schäuble yeah. uh, to be more lenient uh, on Greece. But it, it feels like the Greeks still haven't understood that they need the help from the Eurozone much more than the Eurozone needs Greece to stay. The Greeks are still playing on that at the very last minute the Eurozone is going to give in and that Mrs Merkel is going to get a vote in the Bundestag to approve another bailout package for Greece without any conditions attached. That's not going to happen. We know that there is lots of resistance to that within our party. In the German population there's huge yep. resistance to that. And the Eurozone, I think rightly, feels that with the support of the ECB, with the reforms done, with the ESM, it has big enough firewalls to deal with the damage uh, of, uh, of a Greek accident. Let's talk about the shenanigans surrounding these Courier comments that were delivered in London Monday night, released to the market Tuesday morning. Another example, maybe of, a, of an institution which yet has fully to understand its communication strategy. <laughs> well, if you're the guy at the ECB running the market operations department, which is in charge of coordinating the bond purchases, I think it's probably quite logical to say that with the summer lull, liquidity yeah. in markets low, you buy a little more in the months preceding the summer and then a little less during the summer. Uh, calling that front-loading, of course, uh, rings all sorts of bells, which maybe the chief economist or somebody else at the ECB would have been much more careful to, to use. But ultimately, he's stating something uh, obvious and probably didn't predict that sort of uh, market reaction. But what it does show is that the ECB uh, in terms of transparency about its program still has some way to go. Uh, of course it can't reveal everything ex ante, what it's going to buy, where, when and so on because that would invite um, yeah. market pre-empting pre 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 that and make it difficult for the ECB but we should know more about its intentions over time. Do you think um, you should have well? been saying actually we're going to backload it? Because if I looked at the US data yesterday bets back on that we could see the Fed hiking in September. Now that is going to cause some volatility. Well, that's exactly probably what he shouldn't do. Um, and the, 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 because the issue is that right now, or until last week, we had a rising euro, a rising yeah. oil price, and that may be dampening some of the confidence indicators and maybe undermining right. the recovery. So yeah. you might think, and that's maybe how markets interpret it, if you front load it now, you reverse these negative effects again and boost the economy by doing that. Now you're saying there might be a new problem uh, in September yeah. if the Fed hikes rates. If they start getting into being tactical about their bond purchases, that's exactly uh, what they shouldn't do. Um, they should sort of pre-commit to what they're wanting to do uh, right. and stick with that line as far as possible. And if they are, if there are, if there is a practical reason to change and deviate from the rule, then also communicate that as early as possible, as broadly as possible, which maybe wasn't the case on, on this Monday, uh, in order not yeah. to surprise markets. Not surprising markets, I think, is very important here.